All right, we are out to check traps. We set traps yesterday in this area that's kind of close to our house. We have a state lands permit for. We've caught some beaver here in the past, uh, but we're just starting to get open water. We live in a part of the state where not all water is open up by the time that trapping season ends. So once we start getting these little bits of open water, it's really important that we capitalize on trying to get some sets out and catch animals while we can. Um, you know, it's unfortunate that a lot of times we run out of trapping season before the conditions improve, but the other side of that is that the fur is really prime, doesn't get rubbed up, scuffed up, beat up by those animals during their, you know, spring traditions per se. Once they start breeding, they start beating on each other pretty hard. So it's catch 22, it can be a little bit more difficult to trap in the spring here in Northern New Hampshire. But on the other side, it's some of the best fur you can find. So we'll get out here and see if we got anything. We only made two sets pretty far away from the hut. Kind of hoping that there's a mature animal cruising far. You know, they've got to go. I don't know if you can see from here, actually. We'll try. Right here, there's a hut. And this is all iced over. And we were trapping up here where there's some finally some open water so uh, again kind of hoping that they came out and cruised that far last night nothing saying that they did or would or should so I'll let you know what we find all right they can help us check our first set nothing technical here this is just again kind of Hoping that there's a animal cruising through. So again, hut down here, probably 300 yards, some open water at the inlet. And so very, very simple set was made here. We just put a caster mound out, which is, you know, it's how beavers communicate. So beavers push a bunch of mud up onto the land and then they excrete their caster on it. And that caster smell is a claiming of territory saying this is my, my area. So what we've done here is we just made a caster mound, put a 330 in front of it. Again, not technical, super easy set. Here's where our set was. And there's the beaver. So it's a small beaver, it's a young of the year, but that's okay. Uh, we're fortunate that we have markets for those. So we're happy with that. So we're gonna go, before we reset this, we're gonna go check our trap that's further down the way here. And it's gonna help us dictate whether or not we are gonna continue to, to trap this location or call it good. So admittedly, we're coming up on our next set. Can't quite see from here, but I was not super excited about this set. It just, there wasn't the right place to make a caster mount and a caster set. But we kind of used things, you know, I took a bunch of brush, a bunch of logs and stuff out of the water and made a funnel for them. So we're gonna cross the water here and see what we, what we have. If we have anything, see if Joey stays here or comes with us. What do you mean, buddy? Now I'm just in hip boots and this is this, will, <laughs> this type of water that can be shallow until it isn't. It's deep. So it looks like we've got a good sized beaver here. At least an adult. <clears throat> so you see here, we used over here, we used a stick. This was ice before yesterday. That's another thing we're dealing with is you know, changing water conditions daily, but we use a stick on the ice to act as a funnel, use this to act as a funnel. So none of this was here, we made this. And then we hung a 330 on a branch here with a big old sloppy scent mound. Now what I did, this piece of aspen right here, I placed along with the set. And what that does, is it, it's kind of more of a way to tell us if there's more beavers here. So if this was super active and there was another animal, that came up here this far up the flowage Joe, joey's behind me another animal came this far up the flowage 
they wouldn't couldn't help themselves but to take that piece of aspen. So aspen's a preferred food source, and after a season of being underwater, you know they're they're looking for that good food. So because that's still there, I don't think there's another beaver coming up this far, or not that they're not, but there's not a ton of activity. You know we could run these sets for a couple more days, probably maybe catch another beaver or two, but. We got two sets, two beavers. I'm happy with that. Uh, there's not a ton of activity up here, and this is a permit we have for multiple years. So I'm gonna pull this set here, pull that set down there, take our beavers home, and just be absolutely pumped on what we got. So I'm gonna set this up and see if we can take a look at what we got here. Okay. All right. We're hopeful you guys can see from there. We get our gloves on. Again, because we're not remaking the set, I'm just kind of tossing everything to the side, but let's see what this animal is. Boy, that's not a small beaver. Wow, that's a perfect catch. Just some more solid ground. I don't know if you can see that catch, but right behind the ears, that's, uh, that's perfect. That means he dove just like we wanted him to. Let's get him out of this trap. Okay. Wow, yeah, no, that's not a small beaver at all. Things getting bigger and bigger as we go. Try to get my wire out. Of course, I didn't bring a sled in here because I'm not in my winter mentality. So we've got a bit of a hike with two beavers, one of which is nothing to shake a stick at. And this is the goal. So again, we we made this set. We made this set far away from the hut purposefully. One, this is where we started to get some good weather or some good water conditions. But two, the furthest away from the hut, the larger the beaver you're going to be dealing with. So generally speaking, right next to the hut, the kits come out, they play around right there, you know, close to home. But these adults come out and, and explore their territories every night to make sure there's no one encroaching as we, you know, tried to hint that we were doing. That's the whole idea. We are playing towards the territoriality of the beaver. I'll leave this aspen right here for them. If there's another beaver in here, they'll be happy to have it. I'm sure there are more beavers here. Just lost the spring on my self-setting, my self-locking setters there, so. All right, look at this animal. Oh, oh boy. All right, let's see if we can, I don't know if you can see that, but that is a big beaver. That is a big, big beaver. It's probably a 40 pound or better beaver. So of course we can't sex them till we 
skin them. You can try to feel for the penis bone, but a lot of times I'll check up here for the nipples. You know, those adult females, if she's bred or if she's going to breed, those will be nice and big. I don't feel anything on this, likely a male. Again, we'll have to get in, wow. That's a beautiful animal. All right, I'm gonna bring this stuff across and then come back for the beaver. Joey is waiting ever so patiently on the far shore. One of the best parts of trapping, having Joey along. As far as the trapping dog goes, it's more about having someone there with you. Keep you company. I bet we can get everything all at once. So again, I mean, look at the size of that beaver. And it's fur is just beautiful. It's not beat up yet. So we're gonna try to walk across this mucky bottom. Of course, my boots are already stuck. Joey's been being awfully good over there. You excited, buddy? You excited? Oh. This is Joey's favorite part. You know, we use snow. Try and dry him off a little bit. Excited? What? What? That little big beaver, huh, Joey? What? Look at how pretty that animal is. What do you think, buddy? Wow, it's nice and round, too. Again, no fighting marks. No negative marks from the bile. No hair loss. Good looking beaver. Trying to show you how we carry beavers over a wound. So, one beaver this is easy to deal with. Two beavers might be a whole darn thing, but front leg and back leg so it's facing you. Or so the belly's facing you and then it goes around on your shoulders. And with the backpack it helps, but this is how we carry beavers out when we're trapping in remote places.
we're gonna put this guy ooh, down right there. We'll get our other trap. You'll notice this animal's pretty far away from where the set was. That's intentional. Um, we give them a long line and we make our sets in such a way that when the trap fires, that animal will move away. And we do that because this time of year, these animals are so territorial that if this guy's brother or sister, mother, whomever, another person that's calling, he comes along and smells what we put out here for Castor as an intruder, they don't care who's who, they'll just start beating up whoever's in this set. So you'll have a, a beaver that is, you know, deceased in your trap and another beaver will come along and just, you know, a perfectly, a perfect pelt will be just absolutely torn up. So again, it's just like the set of traps in the manner it lets them fall away. And again, I lost the spring on my setters. So this right here that is usually, you know, comes back to itself via a spring. There's no spring on it. So I gotta do it by hand. So I'm just struggling a little bit with that. There's another beautiful animal. Again, small, right? It's a kit. It's this year's, last year's young. It's about to be one. Beavers are born sometime in, you know, May or June here in New Hampshire. You know, in the traditional fur market, there was not a huge, huge uh, market these little guys but we're fortunate that the markets that we have we can sell them which is nice it allows you to utilize every animal you know we make sets as intentional as possible to harvest the mature animals and leave the small ones for future seed but the realities of it are you know you often catch small ones So having a market for those can be very helpful. Joey waiting for us ever so patiently. Oh, 
curious about what we're bringing back. Where is it going? Where is it? And we'll utilize some of that snow. Interesting, this guy actually has a wound on him. If you look on his chest, right here, there's a bite wound from another beaver. This is getting about the time of year where beavers are starting colony breakup, so those females will start being pretty tough on the young of the year and you know, trying to get them to move, essentially evicting them as soon as water opens up enough for them to go out and find their own territory. So that right there is exactly what I'm talking about, about spring beavers. I mean, you see that. So again, you know, fortunately that's in a spot that is not influential in the fur market, right? So it's on the inside of the shoulder. You don't really use that part of the animal for garments anyway. So that's an okay, as far as damage goes, that's okay damage. But you can see how, you know, if that was right in the dead center of the back like on this beaver and look how beautiful beautiful this animal is as he dries you know you could imagine if he had a big hole right here i mean you're taking a very valuable animal and uh you know degrading it as far as the fur market goes but let's just take a look at these views we've got here we're fortunate to be trapped in an absolutely beautiful beautiful valley Come here. Come here. Over here. Come on. All right, we're going to try to get these out of here. I'd love to try and film it, but it's kind of foolish to think I can do it and need all my hands. So we'll touch base our next sets. Boy, I'm looking down there and essentially, so you see this big wetland here. It funnels underneath the road and then comes through this, you know, little holding pond apparently. I, well, I say holding pond, it's created by the beavers. And that right there is the pinch. And I can't quite tell from here, but it looks as if one of my sets is not how I left it. Let's go check that out. So again, these are just pass through um, channel sets, also known as blind sets. So that means that you're not using an attractant. So you're just setting them so they interact with your set blindly. And there was a little bit of beaver sign in here. Definitely some from the fall, but admittedly this somewhere that I kind of thought we'd have a higher likelihood of finding an otter, but you know, this is from the fall. This might now nah, from the fall, maybe midwinter. Come on, Dwight. Yep. 
it looks to me like you've got one absolutely monstrous beaver. Kind of hard to tell for scale, but in this trap down here is set off with nothing in it. And honestly, kind of anticipated that here. This set, the trigger was was um, splashing in the water, and I looked at it and said, oh boy, I think that's probably gonna, that's probably gonna get fired, but it's one of those things where you kind of do what you gotta do. Um, so yeah, this is exciting though. Let's let's get back and look at, look at this beaver. Wow, that is an absolute behemoth. That is an absolute fucking giant. Oh my god! Look at the size of that tail! Holy sheesh! Oh boy! Wow! Look at the size of that tail in comparison to my hand. I mean, that's a. This is an absolute monster. That is just a monster excuse my language just a perfect catch right behind the ears but look at that animal that's joey for scale joey's 35 pound dog and that's that's all of him wow well i think we will and this was coming upstream which means that that set behind us must have been already tripped by the water and he came up. This is this little pinch point here. I've caught a few beavers in. It's just it's deadly. It's the whole flowage comes right through here, and the way the cattails hang over, it's one of the spots it produces year to year to year. So let's get him out. Get our hands. Up. Okay. Now that we know that there is some beaver in here, I'm gonna add a little bit of caster to the bank. Actually, I might hang it in a tree. Um, just something that says, hey, there's another beaver hanging around here. Um, being that we had very little beaver sign and this thing's so large, I expect we're on the outer skirts of this beaver's territory. But who knows, want to be prepared in case there's another, in case this one's mate is up, travel this far around. Ah, oh, yeah, these new set, this set with that broken spring, it's really giving me a time. That is one thing about spring animals, these spring beavers, is that you know the traps hit so hard that you can lose a little bit of fur right behind the neck. Fortunately, he's so big that it's between where that is and the... Oh man, look at the size of that animal. Holy cow. Holy cow. That is no joke. I bet that that's at least a 48 pound beaver. I mean, that thing is monstrous. We'll see when we get it back. Wow, that's not bad for a, uh, you know, we, I gotta get my trap out of here. These were kind of just, these are sets that we run every year. This particular landowner is really good to us. Um, they have perpetual beaver issues and so 
They just want us to stay ahead of the beavers. And so every spring, even though we didn't have, you know, really hot beaver sign, we come in and make a few sets just to kind of help them out. So that is, that's impressive, man. We've had for a couple sets that were iffy just after work. This has been a pretty productive, I mean, four traps with three animals. It's not so bad. So let's get this set back up. So yeah, the whole idea of this spot, this location, is that as the brook comes through, I don't know if we can get a better view for you guys. As the brook comes through here, it narrows right down into just the width of a 330. And it narrows down like that, right in front of, or right in between a bunch of cattails. So it just provides a really stellar set. We have the water depth here. I'm gonna run my triggers down. One trap, one stick helps stabilize there. There's something here. This was my stabilizing stick yesterday. I mean, that is rock solid. So now it's just a matter of brushing it in. This spot's sweet because you can really brush it in well. Like a little something more to make them duck. Taking my safety off so this trap's hot. I often talk loud to myself like that, but. So, I'll show you the approach. You know, whether they're coming upstream or downstream, that's what they're seeing, you know? So that's, this is right at water level. So the whole idea is, that stick out of the way. The whole idea is that as they approach that set, they see this obstruction, they naturally dip. You know, a beaver's got no problem dipping under something, so they're gonna dip their head under, and their chest is gonna hit the trigger. Oh, fire. Pretty exciting. All right, now we've got a hot trap, we gotta watch the dog. So we need to remake this one. I mean, look at the size of that foot next to that tail. That's a huge beaver. Huge, huge beaver. I got, <laughs> kind of got a little bit of a walk. Yesterday, right, let's see what we can get going here. So this is the same idea here. Just making a blind set. First now I add just a little bit of bait. And um, yeah, the only issue with this exact location is that, uh, would you look at that, when it fired, that stick got caught inside the jaws. So the issue with this spot is we don't quite have the depth to Sorry, I'm just watching my dog. Joey, over here. Here. Come on. Here. Got a live trap up there and without Riley to watch him, just want to make sure that he is 
not near it. So yeah, the, the issue with this exact set location is that the trigger sticks out of the water just a bit. And so today I'm actually gonna try and adjust them and make a more of a T with it so that when it's in the water and sticking up, the T is underneath the water. I usually run them closer to just a, a Y. Some guys like the TM, some guys like to make them into a Y. I mean, there's, there's a million ways to do this. I'm sure there's several people who would look at what we're doing here and say, ah, geez, I wouldn't necessarily do it that way, and that's just fine. Um, yeah, so let's see what that looks like. Yeah, see that trigger is underneath the water now. It still has the potential to catch stuff. What's it look like this way? Maybe the key is to keep it totally out of the water. Yeah, no, it's just, it's just at a tough spot, a tough location. The water depth. This is probably the right spot for a 280. Um, I had a 330 with me, so that's what I'm using, which tends to be the case, you know. You, Make do with what you have. So the whole idea behind this is just making sure your trap is stable enough that when the if the animal were to bump it a little bit, it's not going to fall over and fire. And then here, I'm going to brush this in a little bit more. I'm going hot. I'm going live. I'm going to add this dive stick. I'm gonna come over here. Try to get back out of the way. I'm gonna brush in this edge a little bit more with some cattails, just so that as that animal comes up the stream, the easiest way for him to maneuver through is through my set. Simple as that. Here we go. Let's get this big beaver out of here. All right, so just a little bit on this. You know, this is a spot that again, had very little beaver sign. It's just making sets in the right spots and doing it and trapping. You know, we wouldn't have known that this monster beaver was in here if we weren't trapping. This is a spot that, you know, we're just trying to stay ahead of the population. We have taken, oh man, in the last four years, I think this makes 28 beavers that we've taken out of this general flowage. It's about 800 acres, I believe. It's about 800 acres and the landowner, you know, wants us to stay ahead of the beavers. Uh, they have an industry here that when the beavers flood, you know, it's all low-lying land. It's not the beavers' fault. It's just this is where beavers want to be and this is where human development is. And so they just want to stay ahead of it instead of having it be an issue. And the way the beaver issues work, it's always August. It's always, you know, when they're getting ready for the fall, uh, you know, they're starting to build their dams and you can't utilize the fur, then you can't utilize the animal. So we've struck up a deal where they write us a permission slip every year and we come in and we trap just like this. You know, there may not be active beaver sign, but we're just trying to stay ahead of it. We're gonna utilize the pelt from this. We're gonna get food from this. You know, we'll take the meat, both for us, for our dog, we'll take the caster. You know, what a beautiful animal, look at this thing. I mean, that tail is, that's up there with one of the biggest tails that we've caught this season this is just a phenomenal phenomenal animal so a little mushy gushy i'm just I'm, I'm wicked pumped about this animal and catching it in this area it's a beautiful backdrop and we're here in the white mountains of new hampshire uh, and we're just we're fortunate we're fortunate that we can trap we're fortunate that there's this renewable resource every year these animals keep <laughs> keep showing up uh you know that's they're they're a rodent they have a very high productivity rate and so uh yeah
we're lucky and we're pumped so we're gonna get this out of here i drove in this road yesterday to make sets and convinced myself it was a little too muddy to come in here again today you know again trying to respect the landowner and the amount of money that it takes to uh, keep their infrastructure up and running and so i hiked in today and uh starting to regret that decision but we'll get it out of here